DVD era TV back at y'all with another one. Y'all know the slogan. Today we're going to talk about French Montana backing down from a one on one with Shay Davis. Now let's get into it. Mixtapes and DVDs is my era. Facts. We did it better. Yep. Pelly Pelly Leathers, Facts. ACG Boots. Uh. We 80s babies in uh. early 90s when it got grimy. I was out of this world, you could not find me. Unless you check the lobby, hustling was my hobby. We was lobby boys yep. before Jim Jones. You could catch me at Harlem eating Jim Bones. Uh. Mac, was good, you hear me? Told you we was gonna do it, did I tell you so? Get OTF, SM. Now, French Montana and Shay Davis are two of the main faces of the DVD era. French had his own DVD for Cocaine City and still managed to be on other DVDs. And Shay Davis will appear on a countless number of DVDs as well, but was mainly known for being on Smack. Now, Shay Davis had his own DVD as well called Blam DVD, and in the late 2000s, things seemed to slow up a little for Punch. Now, things mainly slowed up for Shay Davis at the time because his main promotional outlet, which was Smack DVD, were crossed crossover into battle rap starting a URL. But things would seem to go a little different for French Montana. Now after linking up with Max B, things started to pick up for him. Now not too long after Max B was sentenced to 75 years in prison, French Montana was signed with Akon and bounced around before finding a home at Bad Boy Records. But in 2010, Shea Davis would do an interview with DJ Superstar J and he'll call out French Montana saying he never sold cane and he only was getting money from doing credit cards scams and he even says that French was scared to shoot the fade with him. Some people say they flip pounds and all that. It was doing credit card schemes. Yo, what's good? You feel some way about that? You can shoot a five in your projects. Now, Shea Davis even went on to say that he recorded the whole conversation that he had with French Montana and that French Montana basically ain't want no smoke. And if he was to release the whole conversation, French Montana career would be over. You don't want to hear what he's saying. I could blog it right now and get a million views. I mean, he don't even know I probably recorded it. You hear what, how they saying on the other line? Ooh, their career's over. Now, after reading the comments on that video, a lot of people saying Shea Davis was hating on French Montana at the time. I don't think so. I think something probably happened behind the scenes and, you know, Shea Davis got mad and tried to expose him. He probably reached out for him to get on his DVD and, you know, French probably got a little Hollywood on him. So he got at him. And, you know, Shea Davis probably was trying to figure it out around this time. Smack stopped doing the DVDs. He basically was just doing battle rap. So he ain't have no main outlet where he could get a big look on. So he just was building his brand again. And he was coming up off French, I guess. Like, sometimes you got to do that. Now, honestly speaking, it would have made more sense for Shea Davis to have a problem with French Montana when Little Dirk was claiming Coke Boy's OTF. You get what I'm saying? Because Shea Davis felt he made up OTF and they may have got it from him. You get what I'm saying? And now French Montana knows Shea Davis, so he know about the whole OTF thing and he have Little Dirk down when I'm repping it. So I could see why he would have been mad at French for that. But I don't know, man. Tell me what y'all think. But anyway, if you're a fan of these old hip-hop stories, like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. More content coming, and I'm out. One.